ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ವಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ನೈನ್ತ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸಮ್ ಅಪ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟರಿ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೇದಾಂತ ಗಾತಿ ಸಮಾನ್ಯಾತ್ ಗಾತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಸಮಾನ್ಯಾತ್ ಆನ್ ಅಕೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಯೂನಿಫಾರ್ಮಿಟಿ ಆನ್ ಅಕೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಯೂನಿಫಾರ್ಮಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೇದಾಂತ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟೇಕನ್ ಆಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆನ್ಶಿಯನ್ intelligent has will ideation intention but not more than that as soon as will becomes manifest in the projection or envisionment of the cosmos from that point the cosmos assumes apparent reality and it begins to function on its own terms its time space action motion distance work <laughs> momentum and so on all the laws of physics and chemistry and whatever come into play and the thing appears to go on all by itself but actually <laughs> underlying the manifestation is the pure consciousness of brahman the objectless consciousness why is it objectless how can you say there's no object if there's a whole physical world a whole ma- a manifestation taking place because get this this is really cool brahman is the projection and brahman is only consciousness awareness rather he doesn't need consciousness in other words he doesn't need an object for his awareness because the only thing to be aware of is also he himself he does not become divided he does not become many not really only apparently because of this projection this projection this ideation this visualization this intelligent intention to create a world why does he do that well because he can <laughs> because he does because that's what he is by nature anything that he imagines or dreams or thinks or intends becomes simply because in order to intend something you have to create a mental picture of it and the difference between our mental pictures and brahman's mental pictures is that his mental pictures have real force they have actuality they have persistence Uh, just look at this material world it persists for a long 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 time but ours although they're not as persistent our dreams <laughs> our thoughts our projections our intentions uh, are of the same nature and this is why it said that a man's word is the basis of his existence the real value of his existence is a man's ability to follow his own promises even to himself that is how a man becomes godly godlike huh and when one realizes one's nature as pure consciousness then there's no way to distinguish there's no sharp division between god and the devotee in essence in their being because their being is of the same quality 
That is enlightenment. That is real spiritual life. And that is the life, that is the view, that is the uh, doctrine, is not the right word, no. View is better. The vision that is revealed in the Vedas uniformly from beginning to end. Now, yes, it's true that some of the Upavedas, some of the ancillary works of the Vedas, argue these ideas. But this is only to educate the reader in how to counteract opposing views. Huh? Actually, the purpose of the Vedas is one and one only, and that is to reveal Brahman. And that is also to reveal our real nature, because Vedas have little value, really, as only book learning. The real purpose of the Vedas is for us to realize our real being. And once we do that, that's the end of all miseries. That's the end of all sufferings. Uh, because one sees how everything is going on. <laughs> and that's really where you want to be. And the final sutra of this section, Shrutavacha, Shrutatvat, being declared by the Shruti, Cha also, and. And because it is directly stated in the Shruti, therefore the all-knowing Brahman alone is the cause of the universe. Brahman is called here all-knowing. Why? Because <laughs> he is the universe. He knows it not by senses and consciousness, but by direct awareness. Just like you know that you exist without any senses, without any mind, without any reasoning, without anybody to tell you <laughs> that you exist. Huh? You exist because you are. And you know you are. You know directly. You don't need any senses. You don't need anything outside of pure awareness to know that you are because you're aware of your awareness. Well, being aware of awareness is one of the attributes of Brahman. <laughs> See, so the Vedas are declaring this Brahman as the source of the universe. And if you observe your experience objectively, uh, I mean objectively, as objectively as possible, what you will see is that you, your consciousness creates the whole universe every morning when you wake up. Uh, if you truly honor your subjective view, not the view, not the heliocentric <laughs> post-Archimedes uh, view of, of rational space. No, no. But the innately subjective view, the unconditioned view, uh, that sees the sun going around the earth. Okay? <laughs> the earth is still. We're standing on the earth, and the sun and moon are going around. Isn't it? That's what we actually see. And what we actually experience is that every night when we go to sleep, the whole world disappears. It turns into the dream world, the slippery, weird... <laughs> Non nonsensical, uh, but also non egoic dream world where anything can and will happen. It's the magic theater. Uh, you have to lose your mind to go into it. And when you lose your mind, you lose the world. Because the world is the mind in some deep, entangled sense. Uh, it's just like quantum entanglement. You have these two particles that are born in, out of one interaction, 
and then you separate, you send one particle far away. And what happens is that anything you do to this particle that you keep also happens to the remote particle because they're linked. They're linked and the interaction is passed from one to the other faster than the speed of light instantaneously. Spooky action at a distance, Einstein called it, but it's entanglement. And the same thing is true <laughs> of our mind and the world. The mind is just the reflection of the world. It's our model of the world, right? And if our model of the world is based on our actual experience, we have to say, that the world is a temporary thing that flickers in and out of existence every day. If you take a nap in the afternoon, twice a day. <laughs> so the material world, the manifestation, is only a projection or reflection in the mind. Now, whether the world really disappears... <laughs> or whether it's actually continuous isn't the issue at all. Our experience is what we want to talk about. We want to explain the world from the point of view of what we actually experience. What we actually experience is that the world is a projection that goes away when we go to sleep and we enter a different world with different rules for a while and then if we go into deep sleep, we go into a world where there's nothing to perceive at all. And that is union with Brahman, as declared in the Ninth Sutra. So in that state, the world is unmanifest. There is no world as far as we're concerned, as far as our experience. Huh? We're still aware because afterwards, when we wake up, we remember it. We remember that, oh, I had a deep sleep. I had a satisfying rest. Now I feel great. Why do we feel so great? Because we're resting in the lap of Brahman. So this is the real experience of life. Not according to some theory. Not according to some set of views evolved by reason but from actual direct experience and awareness. This is what we actually experience every day. Now, it may be expedient for reasons of calculation uh, of uh, various phenomena and so forth to assume the persistence of the world from one iteration to the next. But if you're not involved in any of those abstractions, just to experience the world directly, like uh, directly like an animal, like a child, without making any preconditions or prejudgments or expectations as to what it is or what it's supposed to be. This is what we see. And this is what the Vedanta is declaring. This is the reality. That is all. <laughs> In the next section, we're going to be getting into what Brahman is not. And I'm going to try to keep it as non-technical and direct and experiential as we have so far. And uh, thank you for being with us. And please continue to watch and subscribe to our channel if you like this. Huh? Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.